So just, uh, I'm going to bring David Rush up here, and uh, this, my laptop, I have one of these routers is in the back that I, uh, and I'll bring it up. <clears throat> Let's see you juggle the axe. <laughs> Don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, what we have here, while well, he warms up and gets his adrenaline going, um, <laughs> This is the, uh, and, and you're getting a preview of this. This is some, um, our 6.0 firmware, which we're going to launch at the end of the month. So you're actually now getting a sneak peek of this. I've been using it uh, in my house and across all my routers. But from the connection manager, what we're doing right now is uh, I have one router, and I am load balancing between uh, 4G LTE. And when I came down here at 7 o'clock this morning, the guy that was setting up the network uh, said it was okay to borrow a little spigot. So I brought my own cable because I didn't want to cut his. But I have this uh, going from that little router into the WAN port of ours. And this is how customers are using it. It's redundant internet connections. So go ahead and take a whack. All right, here we go. All right. Okay. <laughs> so what you're going to see is the uh, LT is still connected. That just went to unplugged, obviously. And <laughs> if this is a sale... <laughs> If that was a, uh, a branch office and you had a bunch of cranky salespeople trying to access Salesforce at the end of quarter, they wouldn't have even known it. We had, we had one customer that uh, we were doing this for failover, and they were complaining. They, they said uh, there was a switchover event and the network slowed way, way, way down. What they didn't realize is that they had switched over to 4G three weeks prior. <laughs> And they had been running on 4G, and they were so happy with it that when they finally got the wired connection fixed and it switched back to the wired connection, <laughs> they were so upset with the speeds that they were getting over T1. <laughs> now, how do we know that the wire wasn't a trick wire? I mean, really. Because <laughs> it oh. says it's unplugged, Lee. <laughs> we're going Watch to... that in slow-mo. I, I have it in slow-mo. Awesome we're actually going to appoint you as like an NTSB forensic. Yeah. Yeah. So right. everyone's going to keep an eye on me to make sure I didn't uh, move anything. <laughs> and uh, we'll take a break and I'll let you follow the wires. <laughs> it's very easy to do smoke and mirrors, but this one I don't have to. I mean, this is what put Cradle Point on the map. So, all right. The, uh, the second part of that... Is, uh, is out of band management. And we'll do a quick demo on this too. Uh, we just launched uh, kind of the second generation version of our failover bridge. And what we realized is we started looking around at retail branches, uh, retail stores and branch offices. Where, where are they using POTS lines and how can we get rid of them? And it turns out that a lot of people are using POTS lines for out of band management. They, they plug it into the console port of the Cisco router. And so if the network goes down, uh, they don't know whether it was the network or something, something with the router. They don't have that visibility. So they use that POTS line as a backdoor connection to the Cisco router. And what we've done is say, why would you have two POTS lines? You know, one for failover and one for out-of-band management. 60 plus 60, 120 bucks a month. So what we did is we added to our current generation bridge. We're using LTE, and we just added the console port to that bridge. So now you're, you're, you have... Whatever your primary connection is coming into the Cisco box, could be MPLS, T1, DSL, or cable. And then we're using 4G for both failover as well as that back door. And anytime you can save a truck roll, truck rolls these days cost, depending on who you are, between 450 and in some cases up to seven or eight hundred dollars a month. Anytime you can um, cut a truck roll, you're obviously saving costs. Uh, the environmental people would say you're also reducing your carbon footprint. But the way that this works is if I go into our cloud manager now, and I'm going to go up to our console. So the, um, and do one thing real quick. Uh, while this is booting up, one thing I should say, this is the failover bridge I'm talking about right now, and I put it on top of an old Cisco router. Some of you guys probably recognize that. Uh, and this, this is power over Ethernet. So the concept is, with this bridge, you want, and this is why it's white. It's, it's intended to go in public areas. You want to locate this wherever the, the 4G signal is the best. And in some cases, in many cases, it's not the equipment room. It's not the closet. And so what we've done is we've uh, put this power over Ethernet. So because you can easily, 
get Ethernet throughout and uh, be able to pull that from wherever you want. And so what happened is the, uh, like many Ethernet cables, I pulled it the wrong way and broke off the, the retention clip. And so I just had to push it back in. <laughs> but the way that that works is an administrator would sit down and you can see these are the devices that, uh, that I brought here today that are showing up in our Enterprise Cloud Manager. So we have uh, three of our branch office routers, good, better, and best. And then there are two, uh, one M to M router, which I'll talk about, one transportation router, and then the 850, which is coming up to speed. Well, well, it's coming. Yeah. Just a quick question: um, this cloud interface, yes. uh, available on iPads, iPhones, mobile, capable, or is it, you know, need it's, crazy evil things? Behind yeah, it's it? it's designed for the evil thing that I have right here. But I I do I personally use it uh, on my iPad all the time. Okay. So um, what I was mentioning was like Flash or. But, no, it's, yeah. yeah, it's, we haven't done, we, we try to not do anything that would exclude it from being used on an iPad, but the best way of saying it is it's not optimized. And uh, obviously that's an area that uh, more and more administrators, that's the route they're going. So, yeah, absolutely. Basically, while I'm uh, looking at this, I'll just give you a quick look at Enterprise Cloud Manager. I, I manage, um, I have this side business for managing family networks. I don't get paid for it at all. My mother-in-law uh, lives about, I'm in Boise, Idaho now. I, I lived in the Bay Area for 14 years, uh, Seattle for eight years. I moved to Boise about 10 years ago. It's one of the best things I ever did. Uh, I love the Bay Area. I love Seattle. I keep a boat in Seattle. I come back to the San Francisco Giants all the time. Uh, games, unfortunately, they're eliminated last night. But. Uh, but I love, I love Boise, but I manage my mother-in-law's router. She's 70 miles outside of Boise in a rural area. Uh, all her neighbors have AOL, and they all go over to my mother-in-law's house, who's 84, and she has the fastest internet, internet connection in that area because it's all 4G LTE. She lives close to the highway, and so she can pick up the Verizon signal. Um, I got my pilot's license when I moved to Boise, and there's a flying club at the Boise airport. And so we manage, uh, and they can't get, it would be very, very expensive uh, to drag any sort of internet connection to their location. I mean, they priced it, it's over 10 grand. So they've been using uh, 4G basically to power their whole operation, and it's a cloud-based application. Um, I also run a scanner at the Boise Airport with live air traffic control, and I run it through a cradle point router to live ABC <laughs> servers in New York. And so anytime you want to listen to air traffic control, you can do that. So I have these routers, you can see that, um, in my system, I'm using 950 gigabytes across these uh, 50 online routers. Some of them are using Ethernet as the, uh, as the and so I can track, I'm using uh, across this 90 gigabytes over the last 30 days on modems, and then the rest of it are on Ethernet. And then you can see that there are six devices down here at the Biltmore, and uh, that's just one of them, but these are these are the ones that uh, have here. This is it's really handy having GPS. That's not something that uh, network equipment usually has the luxury of having, but because we're cellular, it's something that uh, that we're able to do. And it's integrated into the device itself, or is it a separate? It depends on the device. Uh, this is uh, this is our modem that we've created. That is we. We wanted a modular approach because on average, the wireless, the carriers change their technology between 12, every 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to do is if you, if you look, talk to Gartner, they basically say the, uh, the life cycle for a wired device is typically five to seven years. If it's a Wi-Fi device, it's typically three to five years. The life cycle for your carrier, for your 4G is typically 18 months. Um, that's when it, it bumps up. And a lot, a lot of retail stores will leave it in longer. But bottom line is we wanted a value proposition that we could give to customers that says, look, here's your cradle point router. Uh, when Verizon rolls out CAT4 or CAT6, we have a modular approach. Uh, we, may, we may do some sort of upgrade program, but the idea is that you can uh, upgrade your WAN, your wireless WAN, without having to upgrade your forklift, your whole router. And, yeah. Oh, I was just going to answer his question about the GPS built in the products. And you're mic'd? 
Yeah, I, 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 I should be just about mic'd here. So the GPS is built into the products. There is a third GPS port if you want to wire a dedicated GPS antenna on most of our products. And then if you don't want a dedicated antenna, you can mux it off this second cellular antenna. So this device right here, even with just the two regular paddle antennas, can have GPS. And uh, in a room like this, you might not get good GPS signal, but you can elsewhere. Yeah, and it's built into all these MC400 modems and all of our mobile products as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I moved out of product management about three years ago, and I'm getting soft, and so I appreciate it. <laughs> down here. Uh, just another quick spin through here. Here's WAN usage, uh, color-coded, whether it's Ethernet or LTE. Uh, if I had Wi-Fi as WAN in here, you'd see that as well. Um, I have different groups in here. The way our customers manage it is they'll have groups, and it could be groups of like 5,000 routers. And if, you're, if you need to do a firmware upgrade, there's some sort of uh, security threat. We fixed it in firmware, now you need to push it out. PCI compliance says that you need to push that out within 30, 60, 30 to 60 days. Uh, you just basically go to your group setting, and uh, I'll pick the one that I've done for this uh, wireless tech field day. And uh, let's say I have 2100, I just go down to firmware, select the latest and greatest, and hit send. And with our, um, uh, you know, basically our firmware server, uh, Redbox could upgrade all 40,000 of our kiosks within probably 10 to 15 minutes. It's a pretty, pretty powerful capability. Does it just immediately update the, the firmware, or is there a, a, a pre positioning where I can pre position it, the firmware to have it download, and then say, I know my dead time is 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. We're adding that scheduling capability. Um, this month, actually. This month, yeah. There we go, then. Yeah, the other thing is, uh, the other capability <laughs> along those lines is maybe I want to try it on 1% of my population <laughs> before I you know, roll it out incrementally. So, yeah, these are, we're, one thing I will say is because we're on the shelves of Best Buy, uh, and I'm going to our development processes now, um, I think everyone understands cloud development uses agile development process. For this, if, if Verizon launched a USB modem and we didn't support it in our firmware, customer would buy that and they would, it wouldn't work and they would take it back and generate a return. And the reason we kept our shelf spot at Best Buy and Fry's for as long as we did is we had an agile, essentially an agile development process for hardware, the firmware in our routers. And so we had, um, releases every month or two where we were adding these USB connections. And as a result, uh, we developed this culture that has served us very, very well on the enterprise side, whether it's the hardware platforms or a cloud platform, where when we get requested features like that, we have the ability to roll it in fairly quickly. And that gives us a pretty significant competitive advantage against other hardware platform folks who we're all friends with that you know, sometimes run 12 to 18 month release cycles for their firmware. Okay, so uh, let me go back to where I was. And, uh, and so let me, this is uh, optimized for VGA right now. I, I, I like it on the HDMI where I get the, uh, the bigger screen. But if I were to go into WTF D8, and uh, my 1600 is offline now, but that's okay. Uh, what I would do is I go to the 850, Okay, so that's still over there. And uh, again, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is do out-of-band management. So I would go into commands, console, and, uh, and essentially bring up a console into the 850. And I don't know that I have the, the Cisco router completely configured, but now through the cloud, I'm using it as a broker to be able to access that Cisco router. And that's what we're doing for out-of-band management. Oh, you can turn my mic on. I just wanna emphasize right here what, what he just did. On this, he went from our cloud management solution profile. You can log this anywhere in the world, secure channel, dual authentic multi-factor authentication to get into our cloud portal. And from there, without having to have a static IP address, without having to SSH into our router, he was able to go from this cloud management platform into this 6 box from anywhere in the world. He basically has accessed as if you have a, a, a tech on-site plugged into the console port of this router from anywhere in the world. And that's something I don't think anybody else in the industry has done at this point. And uh, it was, we said it couldn't be done. Our engineer, uh, one of our st other Stanford engineers, went home one weekend, figured out, I think I figured out, we'll crack this nut. We can now get into out-of-band management. No inbound SSH, no static IP address, because our cloud manager tool knows how to talk to routers anywhere in the world. And you're gonna turn around and use that same Pretty box awesome. as your WAN connection. That is. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, David. So, um, 
I just did that. I accessed my, my orphan Cisco router. So um, let me turn it back over to David. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, again, uh, I do a little juggling here. Uh, and the customers are always going to want more. They want more uh, access. They want more speed. They want less latency in this case. They want to run more applications on their network. They want to replace that POTS line. And, and, and instead of just back up, backing up their, uh, their internet connection, they want to run all the applications on the network. They want to keep their digital receipts going their hotspot going if they've got a, if they need that. They want to be able to uh, do their inventory management. They want their entire network to be going across and they want more speed. They want the latest in technologies. They've got Cat3 LTE. Cat4 is coming soon. Cradle point to be there. They've got Cat6 coming later with uh, 300 megabits per second. They always want more, more, more. Well, in juggling, there's an obvious analogy to more, more, more. It's uh, more balls. And so uh, I'll start uh, actually, and four is probably not enough. How about, a, how about we just jump up to five here? And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to begin by juggling four balls in two hands. I will then going to arrange a fifth ball, which is on the floor, onto my right foot using only my left foot. I will then instantaneously flip that fifth ball up off of my right foot into my right hand and into a newly created five ball juggling pattern. If successful, I will pause for applause. <laughs> I'll then flip one of those five balls extra high in the air, gather the remaining four balls to myself before the fifth ball comes careening down and is caught on the back of my neck. If successful, I will pause for applause. I will then flip one of those five balls extra high in the air uh, go, before going to the dizzying array of five ball juggling patterns uh, representing the dizzying array uh, of ways Cradle Point customers have figured out to deploy Cradle Point solutions to, uh, to, to make more money. And again, it's, it's pretty much all about money in the industry, either making money or saving money. And we allow people to make money by deploying more solutions, engaging customers, giving digital receipts, being able to buy, and then saving money operational efficiency. And, uh, and so I'm going to do this. And again, if I mess up, I just wanted to know, if I mess up, that's a representation of me as a juggler, not as Cradle Point as a company. <laughs> <laughs> Got it out here. So four balls and two hands. All right, arranging that fifth ball under my right foot. Now I'm going to flip it up on the count of three. So folks, I want you to count with me on three. Ready here. On three. Ready and. One. One. Two. two. I'll, I'll start the count. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Let's, here we go. On three. Ready and. One. One. Two. Three. three. Five balls. Applause. <laughs> you said you were going to pause. Oh. Oh. Sudden gust of gravity. <laughs> Trust me, I'm an engineer. <laughs> Back in that. There you yeah. go. <laughs> and the dizzying ray of ways Cradle Point customers have figured out how to use our solutions. Some of them sanctioned, many of them not. We see that's the nice slide. thing. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? We see that slide. That slide. <laughs> All right, folks. And here, finally, at the end here, the, the, the finishing with a flourish as I stare straight into that spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ah, there we go. All right, customers want more.